everyone. How are you guys doing today? I hope you're all doing fine and feeling excited for today. So I'm really happy for this Sunday because we're going to be talking about someone very, very, very important and we're just going to learn more about him. But before we get into that, let us say a quick word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for today and we thank you for this opportunity to be in your presence and to learn about your word. Lord, we ask that you bless us through the lesson of today and that you let us learn more about you, you reveal yourself more to us, and that you give us more knowledge about you. Lord, we're grateful for this chance to be able to, to fellowship together and still have some form of community even in this time. Lord, we ask that you be with each and every one of us and that again, you bless us through this word. Thank you. Amen. So I have my cousin Peace here and she's going to be helping us today. Hi. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> yeah. And before we get into the lesson, can you guess who we're going to be talking about? Jesus. Nope. But we're going to get to that soon. I'm pretty sure you're going to know who it is soon. So before we go into everything i think it's necessary to read the scripture so yeah we're gonna do that first to learn more about this important person so the lesson for today is from john john um chapter 14 from verses 15 to 21. how do i close that yep so i read if you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, to be with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he is to love me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. This is the Gospel of Christ. So... We've read the scripture and the lesson for today, and it gave us more insight about who it is we're going to be talking about. But just in case we're not sure yet, we're going to play like a little activity, have a little activity with peace, just to, you know, get more into and find out who this person is. So I'm going to turn on this fan and let's see. Okay. Okay. So, Peace, do you, what do you feel right now? Wind. You feel wind? Okay, I feel it too. I think it's a bit colder as well, don't you think? Yeah? Okay, so, can you see the wind? No. You can't see it? But do you feel it? Yes. Okay, I'm going to turn up the fan a bit just so it's not too loud. But we're going to keep talking about that. So... You couldn't see the wind, but you could feel it, right? Yeah. You could feel it touch you and you could feel the presence of the wind. Yeah. So I think this kind of reminds me of someone in the Bible, the person we read about. Do you know who it is now? The Holy Spirit. Good job. That's right. So we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit. So just like the wind from the fan, we couldn't see it, but we could feel it. And that's how the Holy Spirit is. But God, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to us after he died on the cross and went to be with the Father in heaven. But since Jesus was leaving, he didn't want us to be alone. So he sent us the Holy Spirit to be with us in the meantime, to be our guide, our comforter, a helper, so that we are not orphans and we're not alone. So he sent us the Holy Spirit and we can't see the Holy Spirit because he's a spirit, but we always feel his presence with us. We feel his presence because he dwells in us, like the scripture said. We can't see him, but he's in us and he's with us at all the time and he brings us comfort and peace. 
So now that we all know who we're going to be talking about, the Holy Spirit, it's time to learn more things about Him. So I think the first thing we're going to learn about the Holy Spirit today is that He's the third part of the Trinity. So I'm not sure if we all know what the Trinity is, but here's what it is basically. So at the center of it all, we have God. And then firstly, we have got the Father, which is the first part of the Trinity. And then we have got the Son, who's the second part of the Trinity. And the Son's Jesus. Let me put that here. And we have got the Spirit. And that's the Holy Spirit that we are talking about today. So he's the third part of the Trinity. As we can see, there's one, two, three. So the third part of the Trinity and the Holy Spirit came after Jesus left to comfort us and guide us. So all through the Bible, the Holy Spirit shows up in different forms. He comes onto the earth in different ways. And we're going to learn about some of those ways we see the Holy Spirit. I think the first one would be as a wind. As we saw in our lesson today and from the activity, the old Holy Spirit comes as a wind, kind of like the wind from the fan. We didn't see it, but we could feel it. Another example of like the wind was in the Bible with the apostles and the best of disciples. When they were in the house after Jesus left on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came on them and the Bible says there was a mighty Russian wind. So that's another way the Holy Spirit comes, as a wind. The second way is as fire. So, I'm going to try to draw that. And I'm not really sure if that looks like a flame, but <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to be fire. And in the Bible, we see that when the same place where the disciples were in the house after Jesus left on Pentecost, the Holy Spirit, when he came, the Bible says it, he came as tongues of fire on the on the disciples. So there were like tongues like this, a fire over their heads. And that was a way in which the Holy Spirit showed himself. And the third form is in the form of a dove. So... How do I draw this? Okay, there we go. I think we have the eye and then give him some wings and more wings. So that's the third way the Holy Spirit shows up in the form of a dove. And this we see the dove in the Bible where Jesus was being baptized and then the Holy Spirit descended on him in the form of a dove and proclaimed that Jesus was the true son of God and that God was very pleased with him. So these are just three of the ways the Holy Spirit shows up in the Bible in the form he takes. So we can see that the Holy Spirit is everywhere and that he's in all things and that we always have his presence with us. So I think more things we can learn about the Holy Spirit. In the Bible, we refer to him in different names. And we're going to learn about some of those names. So, Peace, do you know any of the names of the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit? <laughs> sure. I mean, of course. We have to have, like, the actual name of the Holy Spirit. And that is the Holy Spirit. There we go. And another name we have for the Holy Spirit is Helper. And we got this from our Bible reading today. It says that God sent another Helper. So basically, we see that the Holy Spirit helps us in life and that he just guides us and teaches us the truth. And that brings us to the third name. He's our guide. So the Holy Spirit serves as a guide to us because he tells us what to do and he helps us make our decisions and he helps us know the right things to do and right things to think. And the fourth way is that we could say the Holy Spirit is a counselor. Yep, okay. The Holy Spirit is a counselor. And what this means is that 
he just advises us like he gives us good advice and how to live our lives in the right way to act so that's another thing the holy spirit does for us and the fifth one he's also called the spirit of truth because he brings the truth of god to us and he teaches us the truth and he shows us how to you know learn it and understand it and that's what the holy spirit does for us so we can see that all of these names these are just some of the names of the spirit there's more he could be a teacher a comforter because he gives us i'm gonna put that on here because that's actually a very important one comforter it brings us comfort it brings us peace and that's the holy spirit for you guys so we can see all the good things that the Holy Spirit does for us, how he helps us and guides us and teaches us so much. And all of this is because when Christ left, Christ wanted us to have a companion and a guide and someone to bring us comfort throughout the everything we're going to be going through in this world. He didn't want us to be alone. And because we have the Holy Spirit, we are not alone. So even though we can see him, we constantly feel his presence. He dwells in us, he's within us, and he teaches us all those things from in us. So when we get the Holy Spirit, it's like we're baptized into the Holy Spirit. As Christians, when we accept Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, we get the Holy Spirit given to us. So the Holy Spirit from then starts to comfort us and we start to live a new life because we've been baptized by the Spirit. And basically, when you get a new life, you don't act the same way you did before. So what this means is that we start to live a more righteous life that God has called us to. And the Spirit brings us like fruits of the spirit that show that we have him with us and that show us that he's in us. And some of the fruits of the spirit include love, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And all of these things are the good deeds that we're supposed to start showing in our lives when we have the Holy Spirit with us. So the Holy Spirit helps us to be better people and he teaches us how to do all of these things. So I think that's a wrap and a lesson about the Holy Spirit. And I hope we all remember that even though we can see him, he's always here with us and that we are never alone. We're never supposed to be afraid because the Holy Spirit is here with us. He brings us peace and joy and comfort and he loves us very much. So let us say a quick word of prayer to close. Dear Lord, we thank you for the opportunity you've given us to learn about the Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask that even though we can't see you or the Holy Spirit, that you help us constantly feel your presence and that your presence never departs from us. We ask that you be with us at all times, you guide us and protect us. Lord, we pray that through this word, you bless your children today and that you help them constantly live a life with the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for your word again, and we pray that you bless this week and continue to be with us. Amen. So that's it on our lesson on the Holy Spirit. I hope you all have a wonderful and amazing week, and bye.